Hello, everyone. I'm Fei Fei Liao. My pronouns are she and her. This is the podcast series Voices of Us. I'm the host, talking with our amazing speakers about LGBTQIA+ international students' stories and share some learnings with you. In this episode, let's listen to Kathy's coming out journey and how she has been communicating with her family and friends about her sexuality identity. Welcome, Kathy. First of all, glad to be here. Thanks for having me on the podcast. So my name is Kathy. I'm come from China. I've been in Australia for a little bit more than three years. So I came here pre-COVID. <laughs> Wow. When everything was still, you know, peachy and nice. But、mm. anyway, so I came here as an international student、mm. to study film producing at the University of Melbourne, and I also have a background in psychology and marketing. So right、mm. now I work in a、um, psychology company called Mind Space Consulting at Melbourne. I also do indie film production in my own production company, and I also do volunteering at a nonprofit. For Chinese queer community in Australia, and the、uh, nonprofit name is Entra Australian New Zealand Tongji Rainbow Alliance. Hmm. Wow. You have so many hats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's quite incredible to hear that you've been here for three years only, and most of the time it was during the lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> you you already started to do so many different things. What was the feeling like when you were in the closet? I think the most difficult part was、um, coming out to myself, actually.、Mm. So I think I was in denial for a long time, and、mm. that's when things felt most difficult.、Mm. I think I first started realizing. Basically, I was in middle school. There was this girl that I had a huge crush on, and I had never, like prior to that, suspected if. My sexuality was like different, or like there weren't any signs really, because I didn't grow up as a tomboy. I look kind of girly. I like the things that girls like, so it really came out of nowhere. And at that time, it was still it was still pre smartphone era. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't that much information available, and I thought I was the only person on the planet who would feel that way.、Mm. And、uh, I felt that homosexuality. Is a weird word that's associated only with AIDS. That was how I thought about. So I was in denial for a long time. Like for me, she's not just a friend.、Mm. Like for sure, I was feeling everything,、mm. everything all at once,、mm. and I just wanted to do good things to her. You know,、mm. at some point, I did tell her that I have a crush on her,、mm. um, but、um, immediately regretted it because it sort of scared her away and. During that time, I still see myself as a straight woman.、Mm. I never, I never thought that the word "gay" I have anything to do with that,、mm. because the that term just didn't exist in my dictionary.、Mm. For I think about two years, I even had like a long-term boyfriend.、Mm. Yeah, and we were good friends, and I really enjoyed my time with him. But I just, towards the end of our relationship, I just got super depressed. I just felt like it's. Everything is not right, so I think the first challenge I had was coming out to myself,、mm. and I was able to do that. I think really thanks to the internet and the more information that I was able to access in a few years' time when I was still, you know, like in denial. I think Brokeback Mountain was already out at the time. Well, it, it's either that or something else. Anyway, it's like the visibility. Of LGBTQ plus people were improving, and that had a huge impact on me. I just feel like okay, so this is normal. Like people do feel like that, and I'm not alone. But I still didn't connect the dot. And it was just later when I was trying to figure out what my relationship with my then boyfriend, like what was wrong in the relationship that was making me so feel so miserable. Like I I like him a lot. And I think we do have a very special bond, and we dated for two years, so it was like quite a strong connection that we had. And I also feel pretty good, like we would kiss, we would do, we would make out, and all of that. And those things feels fine too,、mm. but just something was wrong. And 
I couldn't really bring myself to like really immerse or just enjoy the moment as people usually would be able to do in intimate relationships. Mm -hmm. I just feel I was always dissociating a little bit. There was always that space, like a, like a wall. I always felt like an invisible wall that I couldn't really touch, like metaphorically touch mm -hmm. that person, like mm -hmm. with my heart, like something was there. But then with a girl, like everything is so natural. <laughs> yeah. I remember the first time I kissed a girl, I was like, oh, so this is why people enjoy kissing. <laughs> <laughs> when I was kissing my boyfriend, mm. it was it was sweet. It was nice. Mm. It was good. I just kept thinking about other stuff like my homework and <laughs> yeah. like I was like never like fooling the moment. Mm. Yeah. I don't think I'm I'm like sick or anything. You know what mm. I mean? Like I, I think what I was feeling was like genuine and come mm. from a good place. Mm. But I just don't know the term lesbian. I think when that clicking moment came and I really knew, oh, okay, so I'm gay. I'm a lesbian. Mm. That really connects all the dots. Mm. So I think once those dots are connected once mm -hmm. I came to that realizing moment of okay this makes sense I am really gay like everything makes sense mm -hmm. I think subconsciously I just wasn't ready to um, to fully see what I could see because I felt like I couldn't live with the consequences if I really identify as gay that means I'm just I'm, I'm not only feeling the things that other people are not feeling, but I am a different person than other people. So that's like next level. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I just had to think about a way so that I could, you know, have more resource for myself, mm -hmm. being able to maintain that relative uh, independence so that I do have a certain freedom to be who I want to be. And mm -hmm. still I was feeling a lot of feelings and I was not confident at all. So I remember having the self-talk with myself when I was 16. I, I just told myself, okay, maybe now as a 16 year old, mm. we do not have the strength to handle that. Mm. But in 10 years time, when we're, you know, 26, the 26 year old Kathy mm. will be able to handle that. Mm. And I should have faith in myself. And that's what I did. I'm very happy that I had had that self-talk because by the time that I turned 26, all of the things that I worry about were no, no problem. They mm. were not a problem. I did have the resource, the freedom, the support to be who I want to be. And I did become a person that I think the younger myself, if she knows, she would just be so happy that she wouldn't be able to sleep at night. And I'm proud for, for how far I've come. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's been a journey. So like, I think coming out to myself was the hardest part. Mm -hmm. Coming out to my friends was the easiest part. Mm -hmm. I think by the time that I came out to myself, almost immediately I came out to my friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wasn't super concerned they would react negatively because they all took it really well, my close friends at the time. Yeah, and my best friend, she turned out to be, well, not straight. By the time that I came out to her, she 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 never questioned her sexuality mm. yet. So when I came out to her and I told her that I like girls and this and that, instantly she felt like the definition of love got expanded. Mm. That's her exact words. Mm. Yeah, so she was feeling like, ah, oh, okay, so of course, like love is not just, you know, like opposite sex. It's It can mean so much more. Mm. And then when I uh, graduated uh, from uh, high school and I came to uni, I also just came out to to my to my classmates. I like being out. Mm. I like being out. I usually I don't I don't waste a lot of time to to tell people that I'm gay. I feel like it's compensating for my time in the <laughs> in the closet because that felt miserable, <laughs> and I just I just want to be out getting fresh air. I feel like we have a right to talk about our um our like sexuality and intimacy just the same way that straight people talk about theirs if i have some friends and then i can't talk to them about this really important thing concerning who i am and what my life is like then they're not real friends are they mm -hmm. and then coming out to my parents 
was a challenge in its own, but I think once I figure out like who I was,、mm. I feel like everything else just it's everything else is easier. And I think I stumbled upon a great website、mm. that's run by a、uh, LGBTQ plus not for profit in、mm. China at the time. So I just you know try to see what's out there, try to. Um, find other people's stories. There's other people's stories as well, and、um, that was the 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 era of blogging. I remember.、Mm-hmm. So I did my own blog,、mm-hmm. but like through that, I also、uh, knew a bunch of like internet pain pals who were also <laughs> doing blogging,、yeah. and they were gay, and I would ask about their story and all of that.、Mm-hmm. So it's, I think it's my first. Attempt to have that kind of like community and really to expose myself in to more like knowledge and information, so that I would have a better understanding of you know what's 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 next.、Mm-hmm. How do I how do I do this? If yeah, if this is the life that I I want to live.、Mm-hmm. Um, Yeah, and、uh, on that website, so the the website's name is、uh, ibai ibai dot com. They're still、oh, very much、okay. on, yeah.、Mm. And、um, they have a Q and A section、uh, with Doctor Damian Liu.、Uh, mm. Damian later became a good friend of mine and also my long term mentor,、wow. and he helped me a lot through、mm. my journey. And、uh, he would like write answers to people writing to him,、mm. and many people would ask questions about sexuality, figuring out your identity, coming out, and all of those topics.、Mm. And he would like no matter how absurd the question is, he's、mm. very dedicated in just really answering them seriously.、Mm. So I learned a lot from him. I think、uh, it's like his help that really, really helped me to you know. To be able to feel okay, I I I got this.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not alone in this、mm-hmm. in this journey. Kind of that feeling.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, through that, I also learned about another organization called PFLAG China. So it's、mm-hmm. like PFLAG, but PFLAG China. You know, yeah.、Uh, they go by a different name now because of censorship. But anyway,、yeah. but they do gather a lot of information and about like people's stories, and you know, like how to talk to your parents and when your parents are reacting this way, what that meant when. You, When they're reacting that way,、um, what you you would do? So I learned a lot by reading those stories and other、mm. people's experiences, and I think there's a few things that really really helped me because、mm. of the first thing is managing my expectations.、Mm. Like people talk about this being like coming out is not just you saying, "Mom or Dad, hey, I'm gay." It's such a lengthy process、mm. because what you're essentially telling. Your parents is, hey, I am not the person you think I am, and that's a sophisticated、um, topic to、mm. to be talking about with anybody, especially like family. They think they know us, so、mm. there's definitely a sense of、um, first there's there's shock, and then there's definitely that sense of、um, loss. Mm. Like I thought you were this person, and now you're telling me that person does not exist,、mm. and you're this other person. So there's definitely that sense of loss and、mm. grief. And you know, in psychology, we talk about the、mm. the stages of grieving.、Mm. There's denial.、Mm. There's bargaining. <laughs> there's depression,、mm-hmm. and then there's acceptance.、Mm-hmm. And but those stages don't come.、Oh, I think I missed a stage. There's another stage anyway. But you get the you get the <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the idea.、Yeah. But those stages they don't come in linear、um, sequence.、Mm. It's like jumping back and forth and all of that. So so I was kind of prepared that my parents are gonna you know they're gonna react that way because that's the human way to react.、Mm. Uh, but I just didn't expect. How much denial <laughs> there、oh. there would be, but I think my mom. The reality really hit her when I started dating my now partner、wow. six years ago. When we first started to date, then she realized, oh, this is becoming too real.、Mm. Like all of a sudden, she was pressuring me to do things that she never pressured me to do.、Mm. She was trying to set me up with people. And she was like making weird comments about my partner. Like the first time、mm-hmm. I told them I was sixteen, right? And、mm-hmm. that was bad timing because it just, I just, I just said it. it just, yeah, it just came out. And 
Okay. <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> so I did processing, preparation, all of that. I mm. think I'm in a better place to be able to have that conversation. So I told mm. them again when I was 18. Mm. Uh, still in denial. They were like, still, oh, okay, gotcha, all right. We kind of had a conversation, but they didn't look too concerned. And they just, my dad just told me that you don't want to label yourself. And oh, you know what he said yeah. about you don't label yourself mm. means you could still go the other way. <laughs> but he's right. just not it's saying that. It's very, yeah. yeah. All those years, I had to repeat the same conversation because I thought, you know, just chipping away, right? Mm. Just do it again and again and again mm. and again and again. So I want to I wanna let them know that I am, I am here to, to talk about things. Mm. And whenever they are ready to process it, I'm ready to process it with mm. them. So, because I think feel like this is the other thing that when, when people do come out to their parents, sometimes we, we forget to realize how much work there is to do mm. on their end. Mm. So they think they know you, but now everything they think they know you is it's out in the window. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they have to process that while also really trying to look at what's what the real you are and also having all sorts of like you know parental paranoid concerns about like your future and what other people will think of you what other people will think of them what all of those things and that takes time and sometimes being the being the person who's coming out we sort of have that not a responsibility but we're in the place to to be their support like once you are in an argument with your parents, sometimes you immediately become the kid again. Mm -hmm. So it's really important when coming out to to be to be mindful of that, mm -hmm. to have that awareness. Like mm -hmm. I cannot be the kid who begs for acceptance, mm -hmm. or the kid who you know is so eager and so desperate for them to understand me because that's mm -hmm. kid thinking. Mm -hmm. I have to be this grown up mm -hmm. who knows a lot more on this specific issue mm. than them and I have to guide them through that process because they have no idea and there's that really discrepancy of information going on mm. here so it's really important to remember that and and take the lead and 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 take care of them like going through what they're really concerning about they're really concerned about my well-being is why they couldn't accept. Mm. They Their biggest nightmare was that I would have no friends and mm. nobody to be there with me because of the quote-unquote lifestyle that I choose. Mm, they funny. don't think homosexuality is the problem. Mm. They just want me to, you know, like mm. be a respectable member of society that other people will not outcast mm. me or anything. Mm. Yeah. And interestingly, when I was like dating uh, people, my mom was super would be super concerned about whether they're really gay or not. Oh, yeah, because she like her because her version is the same, following the same train of thought. Mm -hmm. Like her version would be like, oh, if they're just playing you, but then they're not really gay, and then you end up alone. So that those are the things. And my mom would say things to me like. Um, so if you want to, you know, be special, mm. make sure that you have the strength to do so. And then my very wise mentor, Damien, he mentioned the mindset of um, when you're trying to get people to accept you. He was saying that um, basically it's fine that if our parents don't accept us, mm. that's okay. Just accept their non-acceptance. Mm. When you want to be the person who you are or you want to love the person who you love you essentially you do not need other pe people's approval it's, the true agency lies within ourselves thanks to damien i just realized okay i'm just gonna accept their non-acceptance mm. and uh, i think i also had a conversation with my mom saying that it's fine that if you if you don't accept oh. i've tried enough i i gotta stop trying this is you, you know you you know what i'm gonna say this yeah. is, it is what it is and yeah. um, I think that's when they really start to panic interestingly because I feel like if I was like really craving that acceptance mm. I was like really working that mm. it's like that because that, it, it, it takes two parties to build up tension no. doesn't it yeah. yeah it's like you're holding each other like that mm. but if one of you let go 
Yeah. The other person have nothing to hold <laughs> on to. So I'm just saying that I'm not fighting with you anymore.、Mm. I feel very sad that you don't accept me,、mm. but I will have to accept this is the way it is now.、Yeah. And I've told you a million times how that is.、Mm. So if you don't accept, then I think it's gonna hurt our relationship, which makes me very sad. But there's、mm. nothing I can do about it.、Mm. And then,、uh, and then I think like bit by bit,、mm. and. And then, but like by the time she already knew who my partner was and、mm. is, still is,、mm. and I think she, she really have a time, hard time accepting that also because she see, um, she saw that when we were together, it's it's for long term. Like、mm. it's obviously it's for long term.、Mm. Like you just you can tell, especially、yeah. being a mom, you can tell.、Mm. So I think that's the other. Reason that she panicked, but、mm. once she started to process this and she realized she have to accept it、mm. because I'm not engaging anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then she just came around and was like,、uh, "Okay,、uh, as long as there's you know someone with you and、mm. all of that,、mm. I think we just naturally also showed her that we're we're a good couple. We're good together.、Mm. We make good team.、Mm. So." I think she just、um, she just went with it, and also interestingly, I also think like peer pressure have a lot to do with it.、Mm. I think my mom had a lot of perceived peer pressure、mm. from you know like her peers, not my peers, her yeah, peers, yeah, yeah. 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 And but then we were chatting the other day, and my mom was telling me that apparently she's been chatting with some of my childhood friends' parents.、Mm. They they still know each other,、mm. and. None of the girls are, you know, happily married in the、mm. traditional marriage.、Mm. There is one girl who's much older than me, but still、mm. very much single and、mm. do not want to settle.、Mm. There's this other girl who's、uh, in the states、mm. without a valid visa、mm. and pregnant with、mm. her unmarried boyfriend, <laughs> <Okay> . and <laughs> all of that. And my mom was like, "Ah,、oh, your generation, all right." <laughs> So I think that、mm. perceived peer pressure is also like going away a little bit, like for her, because、mm. we all live in our own bubble, don't that's we? That's right. Yeah. So once that's 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 cool, and then、mm. it gives my mom a little bit more like safer space for that.、Mm. My dad though is still the same. Oh, don't label、Even、yourself.、Now. Yeah, yeah. Don't label yourself. And、um, <laughs> after ten、yeah. years, after still yeah, still. Don't label but, yourself. Yeah, but、um, <laughs> but but but. But, he, but he's trying.、Mm. I, I feel like that's also a misconception that we always, especially in our culture, we、mm. always feel that we are obligated to make our parents happy.、Mm. As human beings, you do not have that obligation.、Mm. Foster a good relationship with your parents. That's、mm. your responsibility. But I use the the word foster、mm. because it's not a one way street. You、mm. can't make something on your own. If it's a relationship, both parties needs to work. Mm. You may feel like I'm hurting their feelings and all、mm. that. You're not hurting their feelings. Their perception and expectations are hurting their feelings. And、uh, but like not something that parents should should you know like be over controlling、mm. of their child in that way. And if that bounces them back and hit you right in the face, you can't pin that blame on your kid, right?、Mm. So I'm I'm always ready to help them process that. Sense of sadness or depression or that pressure,、mm. whatever they need, I、mm. am always there to help them. Mm. Like mm. for example, I am willing to do the work to help them if they need.、Mm. Um, I think that's that's an emotional that's an emotional boundary I like to set. It's、mm. like I I the boundary is there. This is not my. I don't take the blame for how you're feeling,、mm. but I understand where your feelings come from, and、mm. I am willing to make it work and help you.、Mm. For example, if you if you tell me, oh my god, my coworkers are giving me shit. I can't have a good retirement life because everybody's you know kid is married. Sure, I'll I'll perform a marriage for you. That's、mm. fine. That's easy. I call、mm. my friend. I'll perform a marriage. I'll,、mm. you know, to take the steam off from you. That's、mm. that's totally fine. I am more than happy to to do everything that helps them,、mm. but they have to take the work and you know, like, process that、mm. in a certain way of at least you know looking at what the reality is.、Mm. So where are、uh, where's、uh, the situation now?、Uh, the situation now is we were talking about my、mm. dad and how he's still like that, but. He's improved in a way that he really sees my partner as my partner right now, and that's that's a that's a very recent thing.
Mm. That's only when we right right around the time that we came to Australia. Mm. Because I am moving away, further away from them,、mm. and that's our life. And we're trying to build a new life together、mm. in a different country, a different continent.、Mm. And I think that helps them to to understand that this is really a serious partnership,、mm. and this is a real thing.、Mm. And、uh, we did register our partnership. Mm. Uh, last year,、mm. uh, so and I, I oh, thank you. <laughs> and I told my mom, and、mm. my mom said,、like, "Oh, that's that's super nice." And、mm. uh, she's very happy too. Very happy yeah, she's、too. just very happy that I have someone to be there for me and to support me.、Mm. I did share a lot of tips, but I also want to add, like everybody's journey is different,、mm. and every real every family is different、mm. because it it's coming out. It's Not so different as other conversations that you try to have with your parents. It's a communication、mm-hmm. process. So how you communicate and what your foundation for communication is is the most important thing, and which means that's going to be a unique, different, a, a unique experience for every person and every family. So I want to say, like, don't feel pressured that you have to come out like now or at a certain time.、Um, don't feel pressured that because other people do it or your partner are doing it that you have to do it.、Uh, the most important thing is that you feel ready and you know yourself, you know your parents, you know your family. Do what's best for you.、Mm. So for everybody, it's different.、Um, try to work out a strategy that works for. Your specific situation, and、mm. really try to take the time to, to be with yourself, to、um, understand why I'm doing this and why I'm doing this now. So I would encourage people to just research their local、uh, not-for-profit organization,、mm. LGBTQ communities.、Mm. Usually, there's a bunch of like resources.、Mm. If they are、uh, Chinese-speaking.、Mm. Queer people in Australia,、uh, the nonprofit that I volunteer、mm. at, Antra,、uh, mm. the A N T R A,、mm. that's、uh, short for Australian New Zealand、mm. uh, Tongji Rainbow Alliance.、Mm. Uh, we got support as well.、Mm. Um, yes. And if they are in mainland China, there's the the P flag China that、mm. I was referring to.、Mm. Uh, in Chinese, it's called.、Uh, Uh, 同性恋亲友会、mm-hmm. and I think recently they changed their name to 出色伙伴 for political reasons,、okay. but it's the same thing. It's the same thing. <laughs> they have volunteer hotlines that's operating、mm-hmm. uh, daily, so、um, there's support where you need it.、Mm-hmm. Just、yeah. do your homework, plan well, get the support. It's gonna be okay.、Yeah. If it's not okay, it's okay for it to not be okay. Be okay. <laughs>、yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with us. I think yeah, that's a wrap for today. Thank you for listening to Voices of Us podcast series produced by Co Inventors. If you feel it's worth sharing, would love to share it with your family, friends, and the world. You can find all the episodes on Co Inventors Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and City of Melbourne Libraries SoundCloud. Give us a follow and a like. We also really appreciate the great support from Yakvik Hate Grant. City of Melbourne Libraries, AGMC, and RMIT Translation and Interpretation Discipline.